Hi there! Today we'll be making Lightning McQueen's good pal and hardworking hauler Mac using simple crafting materials found around the home. He's gonna look a bit like this guy right here. Are you ready? Let's get tracking! Here's what we're gonna use today to make our Mac. Some boxes, aluminum foil, school glue, red paint and brushes, a mason jar lid, some bottle caps, a few popsicle sticks, red and green markers, safety scissors, a ruler, white and black paper, and some spare cardboard. First, we're going to construct the cab of the truck, which will be Mac's face. You're going to want to glue the shoe box and the tee box together like this. When you break down Mac into simple shapes, he's basically just boxes and circles. His face being one big box with one smaller box on top. Be sure to give the glue enough time to dry. Grab your cardboard and cut two half moon shapes. Be sure to ask an adult to help with any cutting. Next, glue the two shapes together along the seam. Give it time to fully dry before moving on. If you're having trouble gluing these two pieces together, you could try using tape instead. Once the glue dries, glue the pieces to Mac's head like so. This will make it look like Mac is wearing his classic hat. Add glue to the back seam and attach to the top of Mac's head. Be sure to leave room for Mac's eyes. He needs to see the road after all. Once all the glue dries, we can move on to painting. Time to give Mac that classic Lightning McQueen red paint job. Let's paint our cab and shoebox, which will be our trailer. Sometimes Mac wears a white hat and sometimes he wears a red hat. Today we're going to paint his hat red. Painting can get a little messy, so be sure to lay down some paper or something similar for any messes. While this dries, we're going to start working on the fine details that make up Mac. While Mac and other semi-trucks typically have 18 wheels, we're just going to add the 10 visible tires on the outside of Mac. Take your mason jar lid and trace around it. We're going to do this 10 times. We might only be making 10 tires, but don't worry, Mac will still make his long hauls no problem. Next, cut out all your circles. Be sure to ask a parent for help. Looks great so far, just need to add some chrome and rubber. Next, take your aluminum foil and cover each of the wheels like this. This will give each wheel that shiny chrome look. Do you know why a semi-truck like Mac has 18 wheels? It's to keep the rig stable and to carry a ton of weight. Wow, so shiny! Let's go ahead and repeat this process for the rest of the tires. Alright, this is where the rubber meets the road. Take a black marker and color in the outside of the wheels like so. Mac won't get very far without any tires on those rims. That looks like a tire to me. What do you think? I hope you're not tired yet. We have nine more tires to color in. And voila, our wheels are done. It's really important that Mac's able to check his blind spots. So let's make his side mirrors. Take your safety scissors and cut out two rectangles out of cardboard. Be sure to ask a parent for help with this. Next, use your safety scissors to cut out a slightly larger piece of aluminum foil. While you have your safety scissors out, Cut out a large rectangle. That's going to be Mac's grill. Cover both the mirrors and the grill with aluminum foil. The foil will give the mirrors and the grill that shiny chrome look. Now we're going to make the details of the grill. Grab your ruler and measure out half an inch from the grill and draw a line. We do the same thing on the sides and bottom of the grill, but only a quarter of an inch. Once you're done with the grill lines, be sure to add Mac's name so everyone knows who's coming down the road. Next, grab your popsicle sticks and add a dab of glue to the top of one side and stick it to the back of your mirrors like so. They kind of look like metal lollipops. Time to build some shelves. Grab some cardboard and with your safety scissors, cut out some cardboard strips the length and width of the shoe box. To secure the shelves, we're going to need to cut two slots half the width of the box on each strip. Remember, be sure to have an adult help you with any cutting. Once you have your slits cut, they should look something like this. We'll set these aside for now and revisit the shelves later. Next, we're going to make Mac's mouth. We're going to need a white and black piece of paper and scissors. First, we're going to cut a rectangle on the black paper for his mouth. Mac is a pretty happy fella, so let's draw him a nice big smile. We can do that by simply drawing a shape that kind of looks like a banana. Once drawn, cut out your banana-shaped mouth. Next up, we'll need to make some teeth for the mouth. Trace your banana shape onto your white paper and draw a small rectangle to give Mac some pearly whites. 
Once your white rectangle is drawn, simply cut it out. These teeth look great! Next, glue the teeth to the mouth using a glue stick. Now that's a smile for the ages. Now we make Max eyes. Make sure his eyes stay open and he's not snoozing on the road. Cut out two squares from white paper. Now, with your green marker, take each of your squares and make a circle about the size of a dime. And with your black marker, yep, that's right, his pupils. Next up, we'll be making Max exhaust pipes. For this part, we'll be using two identical markers and some foil. Take your safety scissors and cut out a strip of foil big enough to wrap your whole marker in. Then cut out a second strip of foil for the second marker. Once you have your foil strips, completely wrap each of your markers in the foil. They kind of end up looking like metal taquitos. Now I'm getting hungry. Most importantly though, they look like large metal exhaust pipes. These are going to look great on Mac. It's finally time to build our shelves! Grab your cardboard with the slits that we cut out earlier, then take all the pieces and interlock the strips to create some nice grid shelving for Max Long Halls. Be sure all the pieces fit nice and snug. Take your shelving and insert it into the shoebox. It should fit nice and snug. If it feels loose, feel free to add some tape to hold it in place. It's tire time! Grab all the tires you made earlier and some glue. It's time to attach them all to Mac. Remember, five wheels on each side. We'll be gluing two tires towards the front of the trailer, two tires towards the back of the trailer, and one tire towards the front of the cab. Once the glue is dry, flip Mac over and repeat the same steps. Be sure to try and match where you place the tires on the other side. Technically, these tires would be connected to an axle. Time to give Mac a facelift! Grab your glue and all of the pieces you made earlier for Mac's face. Let's start by gluing on the grill. You'll want to glue this on to the top center of the bigger box. Then grab your glue stick and glue the mouth towards the bottom center of the same box. When we glue the eyes under the bill of Mac's hat, it really starts to show his personality. For his headlights, I'm going to use some stick-on jewels, but you can use aluminum foil or anything else around the house. He's looking great. Just a few more touches. Personally, I think the jewel hood ornament and headlights look so cute on Mac. Now we're going to add the mirrors. Ask a parent or adult to help you make the slits in the cap to stick them in. Then simply slide the popsicle sticks all the way into the slits like so. When you flip over Mac to slide in the second popsicle stick, be sure to hold him up slightly so you don't crush his other mirror. Now Mac can check his blind spots. Let's attach those exhaust pipes. Add some glue to the foil and stick it to the side of the cab, leaving a bit of pipe sticking out above Mac's head. Then repeat this step for the other side. These may take a couple minutes to dry in place. If you're having trouble, try using some clear tape instead. It's all starting to come together. Let's go ahead and hitch our trailer to our cab. To do this, we need to create some space between the two pieces. I'll be using some bottle caps as the spacer, but feel free to use cardboard or a different material to create some space. Take a bottle cap and add some glue to the inside. Then stick another bottle cap to it, making a bottle cap sandwich. Repeat this process with two more bottle caps and allow them time to dry. Next, glue both your bottle cap sandwiches to the back of Mac's cab one towards the top and one towards the bottom. Once that dries, add some glue to the other side of your bottle caps and attach it to the trailer. Be sure to give these enough time to dry. Looks good, but something's missing. That's right, the decal. I'm going to be using that classic 95 for Lightning McQueen, but you can make up your own original decal. Both Lightning and Mac are constantly changing their style so feel free to get as creative as you want with these. There's no wrong way to express yourself or Mac. This side of Mac is looking great. We definitely need to add decal to Mac's hat though. He just doesn't look right without it. Perfect. 
Last but not least, let's add one more decal to the other side of the cap. Looks great. And we're done. I gotta say, I think we nailed the look. Now, there's only one thing left to do. Hall Lightning and all of his friends. Hope you had fun making your very own Mac. See you next time. Bye. Hello and welcome to the LA Memorial Coliseum for the NASCAR Clash at the Coliseum. I'm Jay Ward, the creative director of cars at Pixar Animation Studios, and I'd like to talk a couple cars fun facts with you today. This is the first time that NASCAR has done the clash somewhere besides the Daytona International Speedway since 1979. So I'm really excited to be here. And it reminds me about a lot of cool things we did making the movie cars 15 years ago, so let's talk about that. So this is the first time that NASCAR has ever raced at the LA Coliseum. But did you know we featured a race in cars that was a lot like this? If you remember the Los Angeles Motor Speedway from cars where Lightning McQueen, Chick Hicks, and the King have a three-way race, well, it was kind of inspired by this place, as well as some other tracks in the area. And now NASCAR's really racing here. Pretty cool, right? So did you know that the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum takes its inspiration from the real Coliseum in Rome? They've even got one of the blocks from the real Roman Coliseum right here. How cool is that? When we worked on cars, we looked at architecture from all over the world, and we tried to carify it or make car architecture for all these different locations we go to in our movies. So we took all those elements of architecture and made them look like they would in a Cars world. Kind of a neat little trick we do. Did you know when we were working on Cars 3, we knew that a next-gen NASCAR racer was coming, but it wasn't out yet. We had to design Jackson Storm from scratch, and the idea was to make him look as advanced as possible so McQueen felt obsolete right away. I wonder how Jackson Storm would do against the real next-gen NASCARs. Speaking of next-gen, this life-size Lightning McQueen is a little bit of a next-gen himself. The original life-size Lightning McQueen we built for the first cars was way back in 2006. This is a much improved version that we built in 2017 for the premiere of Cars 3 where we drove it up on the stage at the Detroit Auto Show. You know, he's a couple years old now, but he still looks pretty good to me. Here's another fun fact about the NASCAR Clash. They're racing on a quarter mile oval. That's short for even a short track. When we were working on Cars 3, we were trying to find a home for Thomasville, the track that Doc Hudson sort of cut his teeth on, so we looked at a lot of short tracks in the NASCAR community. One that really inspired us was the North Wilkesboro Speedway, a now abandoned NASCAR track that had a really eerie, kind of special feeling to it when we went to go visit it. We thought, wow, this could have been the place where the fabulous Hudson Hornet learned how to race. And as Smokey is explaining that to Lightning McQueen, you really get a feeling you're on hallowed ground when you're there. Did you know that we took inspiration for Jackson Storm from real next-gen racers? That's right, there's a whole generation of racers coming up now in NASCAR that trained on simulators rather than racing on the dirt or short tracks first, unlike Lightning McQueen. So we figured, why not go new school against old school? Simulator versus dirt, which one are you? Do you know how loud it is at a real NASCAR race? You can't even hear the person next to you talking. When we made the movie Cars, we made sure to record real NASCAR engine sounds so it feels like you're really at a race. We even recorded a V8 engine for Lightning McQueen's motor sound. How cool is that? I'm Jay Ward, and thank you for joining me at NASCAR's Clash at the Coliseum as we took a trip down Cars memory lane. I hope you had as much fun as I did. See you on the road. Hey, everyone. I'm Langston. And I'm Todd. And today, we're here at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum for the NASCAR Clash at the Coliseum event. This marks the first time the preseason clash has been held outside of the Daytona International Speedway. And on top of that, this is the first competitive look at NASCAR's next-gen cars. Next-gen? Is Jackson Storm racing? I wouldn't be surprised. Pixar cars in the LA Coliseum go way back. It was actually used as inspiration for the Los Angeles International Speedway in the first Cars movie. And that's why today is such a special event. So special that Lightning McQueen even decided to stop by. Behold, the Radiator Springs All-Star Challenge! Let's go over the course. First up is the tractor field. When the timer begins, each driver must drive the Lightning McQueen RC as quickly as they can to get through each tractor. And for each tractor that happens to get knocked over, one additional second is added to their final time. Next up is the Willys Butte Loop. The driver will have to drive Lightning around the loop six times. However, during this time, 
three cards related trivia questions from me will be asked. For each incorrect answer, one additional second is added to their final time. After that comes the reverse cozy cones. This is the hardest part of the course. Each driver must reverse drive lightning through a row of cozy cones. For each cone hit, one additional second is added to their final time. Lastly comes victory lane. This last stretch is pretty straightforward, literally. Pedal to the metal to the finish line, waving to all your fans along the way. The fans love a good finish. When lightning crosses the finish line, that's it. We hit stop on the timer and add up any penalties for the final time. That's it for the rules. Bring on the challengers! What's up, guys? Hey. Oh, hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, hey, Austin. Austin. What do you guys How's got going on? going on over here? So, you guys ready like? to um, try the Radiator Springs All-Stars Obstacle Course Challenge? I'm ready. How do we choose who goes first? Well, you guys are going to do a rock, paper, scissors. Whoever loses goes first. Whoever loses, Whoever loses goes, first. goes first. All right, here we okay. go. Okay. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah. Oh. Looks so like Austin, Austin. Looks gotta like Austin go first. is up All right. first. All right. Are you ready? I think so. Three, two, one, go! All righty, he's making it through them with ease. Oh my gosh. All right. Who is Lightning McQueen's favorite catchphrase? What is his favorite catchphrase? Chow. Nope, Kachow. Who is Lightning McQueen's biggest sponsor? Um, Rusty's. Correct. Great. How many laps have I ran here? I so far, four. four. What brand of tires does Lightning McQueen use? Five laps so far. Uh, light years? Uh, yeah, light years. Yeah, light years. Correct. Correct. So far, your time is 40 seconds. You're almost there. Just one more. Ooh, you're so close. All right. And you did not bump any cones. You're good. All right, he's coming towards the finish line. Oh. And oh. Oh. <laughs> Big oh crash. My gosh. One minute. One minute? Oh. Yeah, one minute Perfect. exactly. What happened? What a crash. We, we wrecked across the start finish line. No oh penalty, goodness. though, for that. Eric's turn now. So what? I had a minute? Yeah, one minute. All right. And no penalties. But how many questions did he get wrong? Um, one. I said Chacow so. to start. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, oh, it's so what, um, Chow, not Chacow. Oh, okay. That is true. I'll give you that. Okay, now it's Eric's turn. All right, Eric, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's Hopefully see what you Hopefully he's got. not ready. Okay. Wow. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Starting out strong. Right. Oh, man. He's making it through each tractor with ease. Nice. All right. Oh, now it's time for question number four. Now, Who is that Kona Mark? Lightning McQueen's no, fabulous blue mentor? Uh, Doc Hudson. Correct. Who is Lightning McQueen's best friend? Uh, Tomater. Correct. What is Mama. the name of the town where Lightning and his friends live? Six. Uh, Radiator Springs. Correct. And this I thought last Mater part... was the backwards driver. Yeah, Lightning, Lightning doesn't have rear view mirrors. Yeah. But Mater taught yeah. Lightning how to drive backwards. Only 34 seconds. Austin, I think he's going to be your time. I think he killed my time. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, don't no. touch it. Don't oh, touch no. it. No. It's stuck. No. Oh, no. No way. No. No. That's no. a 30 second no. penalty. Whoa. Oh, my 46. God. 46. Come on. 46 seconds. There's got to be a ruling on this. Where's NASCAR? 46 seconds. He beat you, actually. So the two times were Austin got a minute and one second, and Eric got 46 seconds with no penalties. No penalties. Wow. I got all the questions right? Yep. It's usually on. So it on looks and... like we have a winner. You, Eric. Here you go. Oh. Here we go. On, on to, to the, the next challenger. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey. How's it going? Nice to meet you. I'm William. Nice, nice to meet time. you. I like right, this William. course you got oh, set up here. Yes. It's pretty cool. All right, William. Okay. So Eric's time is 46 seconds, and Austin's okay. time is one minute and one second. You think okay. you can beat that? Beat I that. hope so. I All hope right. So. The hardest part is definitely the cones. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely the, the cones look bad. You ready? Let me know when. All right. Three. Three, two, two one. one, go! go! All right. Oh. Making it through them. Oh, my gosh. He just zoomed past them. All right. What trophy does Lightning want to win in cars? Oh, um, the Piston Cup. Correct. What does Lightning and Mater love to do? Love to tip over, my Four. Um, Four. Uh, the tow maters? Maybe? And the tractor? Nope, the tractor. The cows, okay. Yep, the tractor cows. So okay. Who is Lightning's hauler? Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's Mac. Mac, Mac. okay, okay. Okay, right, so Mac. that's too wrong. So far, oh, you have no. 50 seconds. Oh, no. Ah, it's oh, stuck. No, I'm stuck. Lightning is stuck. Sorry, I got you. 
The time is still going. <laughs> it's still going. Oh. Wow. Oh gosh. You're almost oh, hit no. it. I'm not good at reverse. Oh boy. None oh, of please. us are actually. Yeah. None of us are gonna oh, reverse this. No. Oh no. We gotta make it through. Oh no. Oh, oh you almost hit the cone. Okay. But alrighty. Okay. We're coming through. Coming through. Oh, oh dang you it. Crash. That's a oh, crash. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. Time. Yay. One minute, 34 seconds, oh. plus two. <laughs> you got minute, minute and 36. Well, William, I am Man. not happy to say this, but you had the slowest time out of everybody. I'm yeah. not good at reverse, but thank you guys for having me. It was yeah. awesome. The point is yeah. that you have fun. Yeah, good to meet you. you. Nice thanks to meet you. Coming. Love the questions. Thanks for hanging out Here's with your us. trophy back. I think you guys are better yes, at it. Yes, I have it. a trophy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you, that, William. Thank you. Thanks for coming and hanging Bye. out with us. See you guys. What's happening, guys? Hey, Joey. You guys doing Joey. all right today? All right, yeah. Joey. So well, we here's what you're going to do. Yeah, so me. you're going to pick up um, that remote right there. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to drive through each of these tractors. And every tractor that you hit and it knocks over, we add one second to your final time. What makes you think I'm going to hit the tractors? You just might, girl, because so if you get stuck. who's winning right now? Who can I beat? Is Eric. He, Eric's Eric's winning? time of 46 seconds. 46 seconds? Yep. Is it holding in 46 seconds? Yep. That's pretty fast. So, oh, are you ready? Are you All right. ready? All right, yeah, so, I'm ready. Here you go. Fire this bad boy up. Okay, I'm ready. All righty. Three, Three, two, two one, go! Go! go. go. You can do it! Go, you can lightning. do it! Go! Yes! All right. Who is Lightning's next gen rival? Uh, it's Jackson Storm. Correct. Correct. Who taught Lightning how to drive backwards? Uh, that's uh, the wrecker, uh, Tomater. Correct. Other than Lightning, name one other character that has won the Piston Cup. Uh, 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 Doc Hudson. Correct. Six, 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 six. Oh, oh no. kick it, kick it. Oh my gosh, he's still stuck. Oh no, ah, no. oh no. That's, oh, no. Second. That's one extra second. Come on, come on, you did it, you did it. Come ah. on. Come on! Ah! Oh, Let me do it again! I want to do seconds. it again! No! Ah, so you close. are so, so close. close! That was so close! I think ah, you would have won if you if didn't, didn't hit the hit tires. There. Oh, I had fun. It was going well. Yeah, you're awesome, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. You were so close. Thanks for having me. 39 seconds. So close. Like you just just three seconds behind. Three seconds. Eric. All right, Bye. guys. Bye, see you later. Later. See you later. See you later. All right. See you soon. Bye. Thank you all so much for joining us here at the NASCAR Clash at the Coliseum event. I had a blast. Me too. That was so much fun. See you all next time. Bye. Bye. Hello, Cars fans, and welcome to Project Raceway, where we discuss the latest and greatest in Cars fashion. I'm your host, Langston. And I'm Tosh. Today, we're getting an exclusive peek at the Radiator Springs Fashion Show, where some of our favorite cars will be unveiling their new looks. So Tosh, what fresh styles are you most excited to see on the car walk today? Well, Langston, I must say I've adored the new NASCAR looks this season. As you know, NASCAR is very in. I'm so curious to see which cars our designers have chosen to show off their fabulous new paint jobs. I hear we'll see some new die-cast launchers today too. Is that true? Correct. The launch of these launchers has been hotly anticipated. Launchers are very vogue. Anyways, it looks like they're just about ready to get this fashion show on the road. You ready, Tosh? Give me one second. Okay, now I'm ready. Are those Lightning McQueen Crocs? I can't show up to a fashion show underdressed. Neither could I. Black, very fashionable. Thanks. Now let's get to it before we are fashionably late. Kicking things off today is everyone's favorite tow truck, Tow Mater, sporting a brand new cherry red NASCAR look. These inventive designs blend the style of real NASCAR cars and tip crews with the characteristics of each individual car to create something fresh and original. And Langston, let me say that this design is both. I love that Mater decided not to add a hood with this new look. Classic Mater, new design. And can we just talk about that headset? Incredible attention to detail. 
check out Mater as he drives backwards. Such showmanship. These new looks from the Cars NASCAR collection are going to be all the rage. I just know it. As you can see, Mater wasn't the only resident of Radiator Springs to get a NASCAR makeover. Here come Greeno and Luigi coming down the car walk as we speak. Perfecto. Speaking of perfecto, the pair seems to be in perfect sync coming down this car walk. Indeed, very stylish. Luigi is rocking a brand new Rusty's Red while cruising on his famous white wall tires. And check out Guido's unconventional yet fashionable drill. Superb! What's more impressive is how this dynamic duo always seems to come as a pair, even in this Cars NASCAR series. Friendship is very fashionable, I must say. Up next, we'll be taking a trip down memory lane as the fabulous Hudson Hornet and some of his old racing pals will be showing off their new designs modeled after their original racing looks. Excellent! Vintage designs are so in right now. Very vogue. First up, we have Doc Hudson and his good pity pal, Double Clutch Daily. It appears Daly is leading the way, donning a very hip checkered flag. And here comes Doc himself, a very fashionable entrance for the one and only Hudson Hornet. You could even call it fabulous. As you can see, Doc is decked out in his iconic colors from his days as a multi-piston cup champion. They've also swapped out his white walls for some dirt track tires to complete that very trendy racing look. Very Thomasville. Excellent catch, Taj. Thanks. I know my fashion. I'm also really digging this matching blue getup Daily is sporting today. Doc and Daily make a fantastic pairing indeed. Next up, we have Leroy Hemming and Junior Moon sporting their original heyday looks. The decals on this heyday Hemming look are fantastic. Check out that trunk. If you can look fashionable and let people know you're the fastest, that's a win-win. And check out Junior Moon living up to his name with a stunning black paint job. And I give that number 11 decal a 10 out of 10. Heck, let's make it in 11 out of 10. I 111% agree with you on that one, Taj. These metal series cars know how to work the speedway and the runway. Speaking of speedways, don't forget to check out the Radiator Springs Mountain Raceway, proud sponsor of this year's Radiator Springs Fashion Show. Trust me, it's a very stylish ride. Looks like it's time to get into the holiday spirit. That's right, Taj, because up next, we're getting a sneak peek at the brand new Wintertime diecast designs. Ah, oh, yes, the winter collection. Always a great time for fashion. First up, we have Sally sporting a brand new pair of earmuffs and a gorgeous new wintertime paint job. Looks like she's imitating ice skating on the car walk. Nice touch. Tis the season, after all. Those earmuffs look so cozy. Now I'm craving some piping hot cocoa. And the snowflakes on her side door really add to the winter vibe. Reminds me of fresh snow on a winter morning. Agreed. She totally nailed it. Not far behind Sally is the auto body art maestro himself, Ramon, showing off some of his classic lowrider moves and rocking a beautiful turquoise winter coat. Coat of paint, that is. That's right. Speaking of, I wonder if Ramon did this paint job himself. It looks incredible. I'd recognize those airbrush strokes anywhere, Langston. This look is unmistakably Ramon. The design work is so good, it gives me chills. Literally. What a show it's been so far. We've seen so many amazing looks so far. I am very impressed, I must admit. Totally agree with you, Taj. We've seen new NASCAR looks, classic older styles, and even some winter designs. What could possibly be next? Well, look what we have here. Here comes the legendary Lightning McQueen and Formula One champion Francesco Bernoulli in some very classic looks. It looks like they're setting up for something big here. Could this be what I think it is? Whatever it is, extra points for dramatic flair. But of course, the new racing launchers. How could I forget? Incredible reveal. I must say, the complimenting design of their launch pads is a very nice addition to these familiar looks. I couldn't agree more. Matching accessories is all the rage these days. And matching pitties. 
Francesco's little helper is looking just this sheep. Wow, did you see how those two launch pads snap together like that to make one big launch pad? It's like a fashion fusion. I 100% agree, Langston. Very Vogue. Y you know, I, I keep hearing you say that word. What does it mean? Um, fashionable? Sure, I buy that. Hey, it looks like they're ready to launch. Now that's what I call fashion. I gotta say, Taj, that was an amazing show. Far more exciting than last year's show, I must say. Those outfits were awful. Um, Taj, we didn't have a show last year. Oh, right. That was close shopping with my mom. So many itchy sweaters. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Langston. And I'm Taj. And we'll see you next time on Project Raceway. Today, I'll be showing you some really cool DIY crafts to go along with your Pixar Cars playset. And they'll all be Radiator Springs themed to go along with our Mountain Speedway. We're going to use simple items you can find around the house to expand the world of Radiator Springs and make this scenic route even more scenic. There's going to be a lot of cutting and painting, so please ask an adult if you need any help. First, we'll be making Luigi's Leaning Tower of Tires. For this craft, you're gonna need black paint and a paintbrush, school glue, a ruler and a marker, a plastic knife, some toothpicks, and a pool noodle. First thing you're gonna do is use your ruler and marker to draw 20 lines on your noodle. Each mark should be one inch apart. Once you've made your marks, use your plastic knife to cut out all of your tires. Be sure to ask your parents for help with any cutting. Awesome, now you have your tires. Except I'm pretty sure most tires are black, so you're probably gonna wanna paint them. This can get a little messy, so be sure to lay down some paper. And don't forget to ask your parents for help. Once all those tires are nice and dry, take a bit of glue and put three of them together so they look like a clover. This is gonna be the base of your tower. Now take three tires, but this time glue them together at the edges so they make this cool little pyramid. And if you want, you can use toothpicks to hold them together while the glue dries. You're going to do this three times with three sets of tires. Finally, it's time to put your tower together. Start by gluing five tires stacked on top of each other. Then alternate your three tire pyramids with single tires until you reach the top. This is a leaning tower of tires after all, but it may want to lean too much as you stack the tires upwards. Be sure to balance the pieces as you build so your tower doesn't fall over. Keep an eye on it as it dries too. Perfecto. This beautiful tower would bring a tear to Luigi's eyes. Let's make another iconic Radiator Springs stop, the Cozy Cones from Sally's Cozy Cone Motel. For this craft, you're gonna need orange construction paper, some scotch tape, a plastic bowl, a pencil, a ruler, and safety scissors. First, take that bowl and use it to trace a nice big circle on the paper. Now take your safety scissors and cut that circle out. Next, fold that circle in half and cut along the fold.
This will give you two half circles, like this. These are going to be your actual cones. All you have to do is curl it into a cone shape, like this, and tack it down with a little bit of tape. Perfect! For the base of the cone, cut out a 2 by 2 inch square on the remaining construction paper. Put two more pieces of tape on the inside of the cone to secure it to the base. And there you have it! A cozy cone! Sally would love this! What would a charming desert town be without some… tumbleweeds? All you're gonna need for this next craft is… some twine or colored yarn, your trusty safety scissors, toothpicks, and a ruler. First, measure out a piece of yarn about 6 inches long. Now for the fun part! Take a bunch of yarn and just wrap it around the biggest part of your hand 10 times. Kind of like a bracelet. Once you've done that, slide it off your hand and pinch it together in the center so it looks like a bow tie. Then you're gonna take that string we cut before and tie it down the middle, just like this. Cut the loops on each end and start to unfurl the individual strings of the yarn with a toothpick. We need some cacti. You're going to need a bunch of craft sticks, green paint, and a paintbrush, craft glue, a brown colored pencil or crayon, safety scissors, and a plastic cup. First, take one craft stick and just cut off the top end, like this. Then, take a different craft stick and cut that into four pieces. Now you have all the branches of your cactus. After that, take one more craft stick and cut it in half. Those will be for our base. Next, arrange the shorter sticks around the cactus trunk, however you like. Be sure to glue them on as you go. Once your cactus looks good, glue the two remaining sticks together in a cross shape. Once your glue is dry, break out some of that green paint and make them look like a real cactus. Don't forget the other side. As it's drying, you can use that colored pencil to draw on some barbs. It's looking like a real cactus now! Last but not least, go ahead and put a little glue in the middle of the base we made earlier. Then, place your cactus on top. If it wants to fall over while it's drying, don't worry, that's what the plastic cup is for. Once it's dry, voila! You've got yourself a cactus! Time to move on to our final and biggest build, Cadillac Range! For this, you'll need a big piece of cardboard, brown and orange paint, a paintbrush, a pencil or marker, some tape, and something long and thin, like a chopstick. First, go ahead and draw the image on the cardboard. This mountain range is pretty iconic, so make sure to use a reference picture to help you get the look just right. Here's the one I used. Once you've done that, 
Use a remaining corner of the cardboard to trace out a triangle. This will be used later as a kickstand to hold up our masterpiece. Have a parent or guardian cut out the canyon for you. The end result should look something like this. It's looking awesome so far. Let's work on the texture. Remember when I said you needed something thin, like a chopstick? You're gonna use that to peel away the top layer of the cardboard, like this. You'll want to do this across the whole canyon. See how all the squiggly stuff inside makes it look more rocky? Pretty cool, right? Now, use all that brown and orange paint to make it look even more like a mountain. Be sure to lay down some paper so you don't make a mess. All that hard work paid off. Now you've got yourself a great looking mountain. Once the paint is dry, place the mountains face down and tape your triangle kickstand to the back. Once it's secure, prop it up and just take in the view. Once you've completed all your DIY pieces, set up your scene in any way you like. Beautiful! Our playset is really starting to feel like Radiator Springs. Now it's time to have some fun! Hope you had fun today checking out this Cars playset and making all those cool crafts. See you down the road, racers. Ka-chow!